How's it going guys? Coffee here. Today I wanted to go over the upgraded um, version of the Frostera Gemma or um, I guess the more um, higher budget version than what you start on. Um, there have been some changes since the starter build. Um, we have leaned much higher into um, Affliction Effect um, with running Cataclysm um, and then we are running Entangling Pain instead. So this has changed from before, um, but not much else has changed other than that from the video. So if we look through the skills here, we are still just running Frost Terra with um, Ground Divide, with um, Speed Up Formation, Freeze Chance, Control Spell, and Cataclysm. There might be a better skill for this. Um, I haven't really tested some other stuff, but um, I do know that there are some people that have been running... Um, you know, some things like pain amplification, things like this, just because of the persistent skill bonus. Um, instead, um, it might actually come out ahead of um, speed up formation since we're just getting the 35% additional damage out of this. We're not actually getting anything from the restoration speed because of our chest. Um, you'd have to kind of play around with things, though, to kind of see if there's things that are better. Um, I'm going to continue to tinker around with things, um, but uh, there's... From what I'm running into so far, pretty much we're just focusing on still just plus max levels as usual for most things, as well as Affliction Effect, um, and then having Reap Sources. Um, we're still using Force Start with Defense Layers. We are still using Arcane Circle here. And then we are using Star Stalker, and um, I'm still using Blurry Steps. This can be anything you want. If you wanted to squeak out a little bit more damage, you could run Speed Phantom instead. Um, but I personally enjoy blurry steps, especially during the league mechanic. Like if you get the lightning, um, like the lightning shrine that just makes you turn into a, like a lightning be beam that just kills everything on the screen. You just pop blurry steps along with like the soul eater candles that give you extra movement speed on kill. And you just zoom through an entire map regardless of how juiced it is. Um, we are still just using elemental, ampl elemental amplification, um, deep pain, elemental res, and frigid domain. Precise Deep Pain is um, pretty cheap. Um, I bought this, I think, it was maybe maybe 10 FE, something like that, for even a level 21. Um, same thing for a Precise Curse on Hit. Same thing for a level 21 Entangled Pain. Um, these are just like little, little things that are going to give you like minor increases, but um, if you can get them, every little bit helps, right? A level 21 Frost Terra, a level 21 Cataclysm. These Every single one of these, the Frost Terra was like 100 FE, but the rest of them were all under 10 FE each. So that's no reason why I bought them. Anything that's expensive, I don't actually buy. So like, I'm not using a Precise Energy Fortress because it's like 200 FE or something. So, um, But other stuff, I think it's worth doing. I am running Frost Shield. You can run like Deep Pain or something else if you wanted to. But um, I think this is just the one still. Um, Frost Shield and Force Start have been working best for me. For your bossing setup, you do want to be running... I'm running these plus two candles... You can probably get away with running like a plus one Terra candle as well, but in my testing, plus two cold was doing better. Um, for for all things, for starters with clear, if you are using plus two candles, you're not typically going to have like your maximum number of Terras underneath the monster, just because you're going to drop one Terra and you're basically expecting it to kill the monster, so you're going to start dropping another one somewhere else. Um, so plus two is better for that because you're just going to get a much bigger like initial reap without having to stack a bunch of Terras on top of it. Um, but I do know that if you are planning on transitioning to like the cast wheel channeling version, then you would maybe want to be running a um, plus one max Terra instead. For mapping, my, my DPS is typically good enough that I'm running these um, candles here with just the movement speed. Um, and then on your um, actual slates here, instead of the 1-4 damage here, I'm typically running with escaping the magic ice. Uh, purely for the um, extra survivability, right? This is a cheat death mechanic that will save you all the time. Like if you just randomly were, would be getting one shot by something, this will save you and then you can typically sustain. Um, it's also really good for like the event bosses or anything that there's only a single portal for. So um, it's really, really nice with the league mechanic, things like that. In regards to the memories, the highest DPS memories that I have found are these with this cold pulse inf inflicts frostbite on target along with freeze effect um, the t1 of both of these t1 t1 there may be 700 fe each 
Um, but the T2, T2 here that I'm using, um, these were maybe 20 to 50, something like that. Um, I think I bought one with a, uh, with a 19% effect here just to try to get myself at least a 50% freeze effect. Um, the biggest thing that you are getting with freeze effect is not just the, um, the um, damage dealt by them uh, being increased, but with your traits here, if you read the um, extreme coldness mechanic, that buff gets added on to the freeze itself. So increasing freeze effect also increases this minus 7% cold resist um, effect that is going on. Uh, so that's why you are running that um, or why the freeze effect is going to outperform something like the percent additional damage while target is frozen or something like that. So um, that is why we're running what we're running. In regards to the tree, um, nothing really changed. I just uh, I think I end up actually taking out everything for skill radius at this point because I haven't needed it because of I'm getting the extra skill radius on kill. So I've just been putting more and more stuff into defenses. Uh, so I have this like one point in lower skill cost, um, sealed mana, and then everything else is pretty much just in um, energy shield. And I have a couple points here in cooldown recovery speed. These don't need to be in cooldown recovery speed. I could put these in ES or something as well, but um, they're just in CDR for now. Um, if you want to, if you probably wanted to just maximize DPS, there's probably damage nodes somewhere. These are just pure damage that would probably be the best um, thing to put them in. Um... So you can kind of go that route if you want to, or you can put them in some like ES uh, regain or something like that. Um, in regards to the talents, traits, everything else is the same uh, for the slates. I have um, done basically the same thing. You want to just try to get at least your same plus one slate with either reap or with some affliction effect on it or some other beneficial ability. So I have this one, which gives me additional dot damage for order and gives me one plus plus one charge to everything, which is nice. Uh, having this immediate uh, immediately start energy shield charge upon entering low low energy shield with a plus one is also very nice the freeze duration doesn't hurt either and then um yeah so then i bought a fallen starlight over here with just some affliction effect and some extra affliction per second so right now you are hitting um 100 affliction on basically everything but part of what scales things so high is um affliction is effectively a more a more damage multiplier right um Enemies are taking extra damage for um, you know every stack of affliction. You're hitting 100 affliction, and then you're stacking like over 100% affliction effect as well. So you're getting a big uh, damage bonus off of off of these. Um, yeah, in regards to the gearing, I have been focusing on basically just trying to get plus one on everything. Still, uh, this necklace, you know, should be going up to plus four. Same thing with the weapon here. I should be getting this plus two cold, plus two spells. That will be the next step. And then you want to ensure that you're getting this affliction effect and frozen enemies. If you can get reap on here as well, it's very helpful, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. It also doesn't matter like how, what tier of reap is really on there. Um, most importantly, again, is the affliction effect, the levels and the additional damage against frozen enemies. Um, yeah, because of the fact that like reap purification is just going to be taking off. This is what's doing all the damage. It's not the actual reap itself. It's the reap purification that's actually wiping all of the dot damage and basically tossing it back on. So there's going to be a specific breakpoint that we want to be hitting in regards to like total reaps that we have um, paired with reap purification so that we're getting and basically popping our um, Terras almost like immediately after they're being placed or after having, you know, two or three of them down. Um, then everything's getting popped for damage. So I'll be doing an update on this again right now. Again, we're like a little over 100 mil in um, bossing setup for your traits. Again, this you want to be running Frigid Infusion and Bone Piercing Frost. This is so you can get up to a 300% or 300 stack Frostbite on there. But for mapping, you'll be running Frost Tides and Blooming Frost Flower. And then we can show, I think I'm somewhere around maybe 25, 30 mil DPS on this um, in the mapping setup. And this is with all the extra defenses, the cheat death, and uh, just basically perma-freezing everything. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and run a map and let you guys see what that looks like uh, fully juiced. And then, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. See you in the next one.
a reminder here to not start machines until you finish the dream because the dream timer is not paused while you're doing machines so if you have the points in your tree for it um, you will basically just the dream will just end up like running out of time before you finish it so um, it's important to do it this way around first I'm sure you don't run into any trouble Let's see if the uh, cheat death gets procced this time really helpful again with this like um, mob here out oh, there it goes it just got parked right there by something I wasn't even sure what it was um, it's very helpful when it comes to dealing with a lot of this stuff just because you have a tendency to just randomly get one shot by something <laughs> so especially again some of these monsters that you just run into off screen they do some pretty nasty stuff so we'll run off of that let's see quality of one bubble to the same quality as the highest bubble you own yes Mm, additional upgrades for something else. This uh, reduced damage mod they have on these things is getting kind of annoying, but... Rolled some nasty map mods. Well, just offensively. They're offensively everything's really fine. It doesn't really change much, but... I'm not actually running um, God of Machine cards right now, I don't think. I'm running Eterna and... Um... I'm running Eterna and beads still, even though they fixed the bead bug. The beads were giving like 95% of the crystals to beads instead of 60%, so that's why everyone was getting so many beads. Uh, so they have fixed that, I guess. But this is basically the next natural progression of this build. I believe in order to get this build up to like a damage cap on the um, dummy, we're gonna basically be running with um, precise castle channeling. So that'll probably be the next update to the build that you get out of me. Um, we'll be running it with precise castle channeling just for a uh, you know a better or a more friendly mapping experience as well. You know, everyone likes to be able to just go into a map and not hit any buttons if they need to. Um, if you can always get away with playing a zero button build, always nice. There's a reason why everyone likes to play train. Right? Or any of the castle. Oh, I got procced again. Oh, let's not die. Don't want to die. Oh, I gotta be careful running over those mine things there. Tendency to try to kill you. I'm just gonna pick this up because I'll read it later after the map is over. Typically, I'm hiding all rares that aren't just double T1, even though, like, there's the potential to be hiding some money, it's not. Even double T1 for most things is not really worth anything at this point, which is unfortunate, but just the reality. So this is with the bead card on it. We're not getting as many clicks, but that's fine. And then same with Divinity Slates. Anything that doesn't have at least a Legendary mod on it, I don't even see, so. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, one thing I didn't cover is in regards to packed spirits. I don't have any legendary packed spirits, but um, if you do have them, damage spirits, uh, these are very, very nice. Um, having any of these skill duration, dot damage, affliction effect, this is a more multiplier, right? So any of these affliction effect ones are really, really big. Um, this is 10% more damage for every single one of them, right? So uh, if I can, let's see if I have enough res to run this. I do, yeah. So with this um, on, you basically just want to be running again maximum skill effect or maximum affliction effect because that's a more multiplier for every single one so it's turning all these small nodes effectively into a big node here and um yeah um other than that see you in the next one which will probably be uh castle channeling have a nice one